Warning, you may never eat bread again after watching this video. Why do people love bread so much? There's a new term I want to introduce to you called health washing. Health washing is a term to describe um, giving certain claims to foods that are not necessarily true. I mean, everywhere you look, grains are natural, they're wholesome. Whole grains are a part of a healthy diet. I mean, they're high in fiber, which they actually are not as high in fiber as other foods. They're loaded in vitamins and minerals. Grains are heart healthy, and they can even help you lower your, your belly fat. But the problem is that most of these studies are surveys, they're questionnaires. They're not peer-reviewed, placebo-controlled clinical trials. And if they are, they're industry-sponsored studies. The point is that when we're continually told to consume six to 11 servings of grains as our foundation for our diet, one half of them being whole grains, the other can be refined grains, that's a tremendous amount of carbohydrates that are introduced to our diet. But today I'm going to talk about just one little tiny aspect of bread called gluten. Okay, now what is gluten? Gluten is the protein in a lot of grains, okay, especially wheat. And gluten is a term to describe um, various proteins within this category. And one of the proteins is called gliadin-derived opioid peptide. That is a protein that can create an opioid effect. So in other words, it can mimic morphine to a certain degree. Now, what are the effects of opioids? Well, right now we have a major problem around the world with opiate addiction, the synthetic opioids, where it literally, like fentanyl, destroys people's lives. It's highly addictive. So just one thing an opioid will do is it'll increase endorphins, okay? Endorphins are internal body chemicals that make us feel good, that can help decrease pain, okay? And our bodies make endorphins. There's another term I want to introduce to you called exorphins, okay? An exorphin is an endorphin that can be triggered by food, okay? You consume certain things and it creates an endorphin effect. Now, this is very important to know because this is why you like bread so much. Bread stimulates endorphins. It gives you this euphoric feeling. It can stimulate appetite. That's why they serve you the bread before your meal. So you'll be hungrier and want to order more food. And so the reason why people love this bread is because it's altering our chemistry. It's increasing our endorphins, okay? Now, the problem is that you may have heard the celiac disease, which a person has a severe reaction to gluten, okay, in the GI tract. They're going to get the classic symptoms, diarrhea, bloating, and abdominal pain, okay? And a lot of other conditions too, like inflammation in the gut, eventual atrophy of the little villi or the little um, internal roots on your, in your small intestine that are supposed to help you absorb food, those become smaller and smaller to the point where they're just no longer there. So you have a major digestive problem. And the problem with celiac is it's very hard to diagnose unless you do a biopsy. There's something called non-celiac gluten sensitivity. And this is basically asymptomatic celiac. In other words, a person will have celiac without the symptoms of the digestive tract, at least without classical symptoms, diarrhea, bloating, abdominal pain. But they have other issues, okay? Because the problem is still occurring at your gut level. The damage is still being done uh, on these villi. You're getting inflammation, you're getting atrophy, that will eventually show up in other problems down the road. But you may not experience really any symptoms when you have bread. But what I want to do is I want to expand your awareness on some other symptoms that you may be experiencing that are connected that you might not think are connected. Let's first talk about the mental connection, how it can affect uh, your mental state. Well, first of all, it can create symptoms like ADD, depression, anxiety, and even autism. It can even lead to things like schizophrenia. The other problem is a permeability issue in your gut. So you've heard of leaky gut, right? Well, that is a condition where you have holes in your gut that's created by the inflammation because there's so much omega-6 fatty acids in bread and grains 
Like if we were going to compare omega-3 to omega-6, it's like 1 to 22. So in other words, there's 22 times more omega-6 fatty acids than there is omega-3. So there's a lot of inflammation going on, which is going to create holes or permeability issues in your lower gut. And when you have holes, you allow proteins to go through and you create all sorts of immune reactions. And then you create allergies and eventually autoimmune problems, especially of the thyroid, like in Hashimoto's. And then another one is psoriasis, okay, which is an autoimmune condition. Another common symptom is insomnia, which leads to fatigue. You may have brain fog. You may also become anemic because you can't absorb iron. And it can lead to digestive problems like GERD, which is a severe acid reflux, and headaches, and migraines, and the list goes on and on and on. When you ferment grains into bread or pizza dough or whatever, the fermentation, the microbes actually eat the protein. They start reducing the gluten considerably. So for example, sourdough bread has a lot less gluten as other bread. So the more gluten that a grain product has, the more you're going to have a problem with this. Now, the other point I want to bring up is that over the years, we've hybrid different grains uh, like wheat to have more gluten, okay? And this is one additional problem. And then there's also additional problems too. When you enrich um, or fortify these flour products, especially bread, with um, synthetic vitamins and iron, but I think even when people go off grains and they start the ketogenic plan, one huge reason why they might even feel so much better is not even necessarily the lowering of the carbohydrates. It is the abstinence of eating these grains that eliminate a lot of the inflammation that is going on in the gut and then all the associated symptoms.